Hi, I'm Carl Lubridge. I am owner of Extra Cheesy Games, and today I'd like to give a sneak peek of my new game that will be released in June of 2017 called Humans Must Eat. So let's get started. All right, so what you're looking at here is Unity. Um, I'm running Unity on a iMac 27-inch, and I'm running this directly in the editor of Unity. Um, one thing is this game will be an iPhone game and hopefully an Android game. It will run in portrait mode like you see here. And because this is a sneak peek, just be uh, a little bit forgiving of some of the, um, I don't know, the, the stuff that isn't finished or the technical stuff. Like you can see the frame rate in the upper left corner here. And this little starburst has you know pixelization because of the compression. All that will be fixed. But for now, I want to kind of give you a taste of what this game is and where it's going. All right, so the game is going to be in uh, full 3D. This out here is what's called the map. And it is um, where the economy of the game lives in the metagame where you will spend your money that you'll earn in the game. and uh, also, you'll use what's called gold burgers, which are my version of, of diamonds. And the goal of this is you are a young entrepreneur wanting to make a fast food chain. And you begin a, a, in a map where it's actually not this one. This was actually a, la a couple of labels later. A friend of mine named Jake Campbell and I have talked about this game a lot. And he felt like this was starting him too, with too much. And so he, he threw out the idea of making it a lemonade stand. And I agree with him. So probably you'll start off just on one single block, little lemonade stand in your house, and uh, you'll be selling lemonade, and you'll build up, and you'll earn money, and you'll save, and you'll you'll invest, and you'll get it to be a bigger restaurant. This area, this map is called the Fizz and Fries map, where you can sell like pop and fries, and probably you know fried mushrooms and onion rings and so forth, but. This map is a little bit further down the road, so you're getting a little bit of a head start on this. But this isn't, I'll talk about this map more in a minute. Let's go actually into the game, because this is where you spend the money. Let's go actually where you earn the money. All right, <clears throat> so this is the game board, and you'll see here at the top you have a shift timer. You play the game in shifts, and at the bottom are your customers, and your customers have come expecting to be able to buy food. So above each customer is a menu item they've ordered like this order is a small drink with uh, it's not a Mountain Dew it's a Mountain Dude is what this is called and what you have to do is you have to drag over content from the conveyor on your right and drop it on here and you'll notice the customers are kind of going getting anxious and if they turn into this storm cloud they're really starting to get frustrated just like real people if you get, get your food when you're hungry you get mad and you watch there's tons of videos about that, and if you watch here, he'll he'll eventually say, I want my money back, you know? So he wants his refund, and you lose the money you would have earned from that customer. Anyway, uh, on the left here is your power-ups, and notice when I tap that, he gets his stuff. And up here are messages that are showing what you've done. Now, the, the, the shift ends, and you get a summary of what you did during that shift, how many customers you served, how many you wanted refunds, how much money you earned on the order, how much you made in tips, how many stars or experience you earned. This is some quality information uh, about how, how quickly you served the food and how much trash you generated. I'm going to show you one quick thing about the economy of this game. You'll notice when um, you get the food shown up here, if I bring food and I drop it like this, notice it just disappears. What that is, is it actually went into a trash bin, and you didn't make any money on it. And what will happen is, is if you let too much trash accumulate, you'll actually eventually start having flies show up in the environment. And this is a mechanic I still have yet to put in. And you can even get the health department to come in and shut you down for the day. So let's go back out of the map and discuss that for, some, for a bit. Now, on the map, you'll notice that the buildings here have two distinct types. There's buildings with green icons above them and blue icons. Green icon buildings are food vendors. Like for example, this one here is a potato farm. And so here is where you would go to buy and replenish your French fries or whatever fries. And, and the idea here is that 
your inventory will run low as you play, and when you come out to the map, you might be having an alarm on these guys saying, you're running so much low on this, and you tap on it, and you'd be able to purchase additional supplies. And depending on your store, you have only a finite amount of room to store it, so you can't cash off too much before you have to maybe go buy some more. There's different kinds of stores. This is a potato store. This is a paper factory where you buy paper goods like cups and plates and lids. This one over here is a pop factory. This You get um, different kinds of pop. You maybe start off with just a couple of that you have available. But as you increase in, in levels and so forth, eventually you get deals and, and more variety as you go, which increases the value of your store because you now have a greater variety. Now, the blue icons, on the other hand, are services. And this level, you'll actually start in this level as um, a young food truck entrepreneur, and you actually start off in your mom's minivan. And if you notice over here, there's a slot right here. This slot is where you'll actually start, and I'll have to have another video showing the minivan. But this is a graveyard, which isn't finished, and this is a river. So you literally are a van down by the river trying to sell food, and obviously that's not a great place to make business. So you're really kind of having to beg and borrow to keep yourself going down here. But eventually you'll be able to earn enough money that you can go to the city building and you can purchase an upgrade in your license so that you can go and be at a more posh location where you can do business and hopefully attract more customers. Because one thing about the game, unlike real life, if, if you don't have any customers, you actually just sit and do nothing. I can't do that in the game, but what I can do is shorten the shift. So maybe at the beginning you only have minute-long shifts, but you can only service maybe three or four or five customers before the shift ends. That's your penalty for not having your store quite big enough. But as you upgrade, you will eventually be able to get that out to three and four minutes so that you can make more money at a given shift. Um, also, the game is designed to be a little bit like a super monopoly where, let's say, after you play the, the store, I mean, you earn your money, you come back out. A, a, a dice is, is spun inside of the game that decides of certain things that can happen. Like, for example, maybe um, every time you drive your car around in here, you might get a you could get a flat tire. So you might have to take your car into the gas station to have it get repaired, or you run out of gas, or you know you get robbed, or or, or whatever could happen. Um, maybe your your car needs to be upgraded. You can get a paint job or or add some signage to your car, which is more permanent than renting signage, uh, and that helps to boost your your store's you know capacities and all that good stuff. Um, over here um, is advertising. Uh, advertising you can rent things like oh I want to rent uh, a hot air balloon for a couple of days, where that'll increase your foot traffic for a couple of days, or a sky plane or something. This is the bank. And that's where you would go to upgrade your store. So, for example, if let's say you got tired of your mom's minivan and you said, I want a legitimate food truck, you can go to the bank and for 500 gold burgers, maybe you can upgrade to um, this, this food truck and go to the next level with it. And eventually you'll actually even outgrow a given map, like you would eventually grow outgrow this one. And you would have a, a, like a brick and mortar restaurant that maybe you might be able to go purchase in another city that is got a different map, a different layout, different theme, and um, it, it just will keep growing like that until you become, you know, a mega, you know, mogul of, of industry, and you're in a big city, and you're making lots of money, and the food critics are giving you rave reviews, and, you know, it'll take you a long time to get to that point, but that's that's kind of the, um, the highlights of, of where I'm going with this game, and I feel like it's it's got a good momentum going. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the, the website, uh, extracheesygames.com. My goal is, I've been doing games for 20 years, and I, I want to give something back in the form of um, giving people advice and help with, with issues that they run into, the technical challenges of making games. You know, I, I, I would love to get emails asking me how to do certain things in shaders or or any advice with Maya or programming in, in Unity or, or whatever, you're welcome to call, uh, to text me. <laughs> don't call me. I don't know how many people I get into the call. But you can text me, and then um, 
I, I'd be happy to get back with you the best I can. And if I, if I can help, I will. I'm going to post snippets of code and, and shaders and, and give advice in general about tools I use and my thoughts on things. And hopefully, you know, it, it's something that will be useful to someone in the future. Um, the game, obviously, it's it's got a ways left to go. I'm trying to get out there early to promote it so that hopefully it can make some money. I've done a couple of games prior to this one, and they didn't make any money, and I think a large part of that was, well, they weren't great games. These were five, ten years ago. And two, I feel like, you know, I didn't do anything to promote it. So this is part of that promotion, what you're seeing here today. Um, it is December 30th, 2016, and it's um, been a, an interesting year. I, I hope that 2017 will be a great year for you. I'm looking forward to hearing comments and discussing tech. I love the tech of making games. And if you have questions, feel free to contact me. So thanks for listening, and uh, game on. So have a good 2017. See ya.